Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, I'm guilty. You know, usually I don't hoard cars. And although I've got plenty of them, and I've probably got 200 cars, but uh, you know, everything's for sale, except for this. This is one that I've been keeping for quite a few years. When I got this car, I had time and no money. And then when you get money, you don't have any time. But before it's over with, we are gonna do something with this. Uh, and not a perfect car by any means, but a pretty pretty decent car. It's a uh, 1973, it's Trans Am. Uh, it's Brewster Green paint, saddle interior, 455 with the four speed. All factory. Uh, I've got all the documentation on this car. It was actually ordered and bought through Bryant Pontiac in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is now still in business, but is now Bryant Honda. And they don't deal in Pontiac. They had Pontiac and Cadillac for a long time. But anyway, when I got this car, you know, it had it, there were some major issues, major problems. Uh, this thing had been sitting down in the bottom of a, a ravine for a long time. And the guy where, where it was at actually hooked a backhoe and a chain to this car from the back and was pulling it out. Now, see, he was just pulling it up to the front of his property. He wasn't pulling it out for me or anything like that. Uh, but he was pulling it out. And as he was pulling it out, the chain broke. He was using a backhoe. And he didn't care anyway because he was tearing, the chain was tearing up the other quarter on the other side or bending it up. And he was pulling it out and the chain broke and it swung around and actually broke the back window out. And when, after it broke the window out, it actually dented the, the panel below it right there and you can see where the chain hit. And uh, he let it rain in it and it got the, it didn't get the floors in front of the back seat, it got the floors under the seat, it got the, you know, the, the trunk mainly up in this area. And uh, the, the rust got it pretty good down there but as for the floorboards under your feet and up in the front, they're actually mint. I mean, they're they're just perfect, and, and it's unbelievable, especially with as much surface rust as on this thing. But uh, the first thing I did was put a back glass in it. I sealed it at the top and just set it in it. That way it couldn't rain uh, in the main part of the car anyway. So uh, I did do that to try to preserve it. And let me see. The only thing that was not original in this car was the headers and the rims. Uh, this would have had the early style snowflake rims and I'm pretty sure that's what this one had. I think I, I actually got the uh, Pontiac Historical Society documentation on the car and I'm, I'm pretty sure I checked it before and that's what it was. Uh, I'm not sure it's got a Muncie transmission I'm, I'm sure of. We checked the numbers on the engine. It's the correct VIN. Uh, not, you know everything's numbers matching but uh, he let it rain in it. Uh, I've let it sit out here with a cover over it. And I'm guessing that the block's probably going to be terrible. The engine's ready to set out now. I've got all the parts, you know, everything that came off of this car. Uh, one of the things, you know, you, you, we're looking at it and it looks so bad. But then when you look at the, the rocker under the door, uh, you can see the good paint on it. The paint come off the doors and, you know, it's bad. But the rockers and everything underneath is actually really good. And kind of amazing the way that it, it held up underneath. And I mean you can see it discolored as rust, but there's no there's no actual rust or anything under it. Uh, nothing major whatsoever, except for when you get back to the uh, under the back floorboards. So uh, I've collected up parts for this thing for years. I've got I bought a whole nother car for parts. I've got extra doors. I've got other fenders. I've got the rear section to go under the back seat. Uh, I've kept everything. Uh, a lot of interior parts. The console had been had fell apart in this car, and I've got a I've got another original console that's saddle. I've actually got another set of seats that are always saddled. They're put up in the dry. Uh, you know, like I said, I've just kept a lot of a lot of parts and and saved a lot of parts for it. So I could do it, but I wanted to show you uh, the historical society documents. What what they send you when you, you know, when you uh, do a Pontiac uh, research on them. Okay, I'm going to do this outside because 
of the light. Let me see if I can get you where I know you can see good. I don't have my glasses either. So anyway, here's your paperwork. This is what you would get. Uh, a bunch of it, but uh, you know, got a lot of information. A lot of the stuff is just stuff that they would reprint and send to everybody that orders this. But of course, you can see, you know, Pontiac Historical Society. And I'll move this and get right to it. This is the build sheet for this car. And you know, it's got the van, it's got the amount, got everything that was ordered with air conditioning, uh, radio, AM, custom trim. A Trans Am option, which was $27. A uh, the console, $57. And let me see, the glass. I know some special glass was 37 bucks. And the air conditioning was most expensive. I guess it would. They ended, it ended up being $309 for the air conditioning. But uh, let me see, $4,187 was the total on this thing. This, you know, in 1973, and uh, a couple other things I wanted to show you. You know, they mark it out for you when you get this. It was the Brewster Green, which is, you know, a, a rare collar, a good collar. Uh, saddle interior, which is supposed to be one of the rarest. Uh, 455 four barrel. Shows the information, tells the axle, everything. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the codes to, to tell you what, it, you know, which one this one is, because all of them's not marked, but. But it basically tells you all that, and then uh, you get back to the uh, to the paperwork where they sent you know everybody the same thing. And then uh, let me find something else. I just want to show you a couple other things. Okay, here is some production number paperwork. Right down by engine and transmission. Okay, for '73 455 four barrel car, uh, they made 1,420 with a four speed. Uh, they made a total of uh, 4,802. Now, of course, the uh, the SD would be the, you know, the the car worth the money, but you know, which I'd rather much rather have. Which is called a it's a super duty, but you know, this is just one step below that L75. But like I said, 1,420 is what they made, uh, which is you know pretty good. That's that's not a lot of cars. So, let's see what else we got here. Looking at this thing, the only thing that it wasn't ordered with was the uh, the bird on the hood. This thing was ordered with the small bird up on the front end, and I'm going to try to show you that before before I get done with the video here. But uh, but this tells everything that it could have been ordered with, and uh, I guess the O would probably be optional, and the S I'm assuming is standard or something. But anyway, it's been a long time since I've looked at this paperwork, but. I located another engine block if I need it. It's a 75 model. And uh, I, you know, I really don't want to change because I want to keep the original numbers, but you know, in some cases, what do you do? And uh, this gets into the specifications of the engine and even tells you the CCs in the combustion chambers. Location of the, uh, the eight last eight digits of the vent on the engine. You can order a window sticker replacement. And uh, yeah, there's another production number. Anyway, that's the base. So in 73, they actually made 46,313 uh, total Firebirds. And, you know, some of them, of course, with the Trans Am option and the Formula option. So uh, anyway, all right, let me see if I can get to the front of that uh, grill and show it to you. Okay, folks, here's the, uh, the front nose for the car. And here is the the bird on this one, and that's all they had. They did not have it on the hood. Now, when I, you know, redo the car and go back, I can put it on the hood if I want to. But but that's what they had. That's what he ordered it with. All right, I might be able to show you where he where he had the chain hooked on this thing. He like I said he didn't care. Let's see where it bent a quarter. So this car's probably gonna have to have two quarters put on it. And at least well at least this side. The other one may be able to partially do it but uh but i'm thinking about pulling this thing the rest of the way down and going on and having it uh uh probably dustless blasted uh i had a friend that had that done and they done a good job unbolting the clip out of it rebuild the entire front clip and put it back in uh the bottom side of this car won't be hard to do like i said you know the the floors under the back seat and the floors in the trunk 
which I, like I said I can work with. I bought a whole nother body that's actually perfect body, newer model, but uh, it's got what I need in it anyway. So this might be a project for too long, you never know. I want to uh, I want to do another thing too. I want to post a video. You know, some people you know really amaze you what they do and and you know their dedication to something. And you know I know a lot of people think well you got so many projects. I do have a lot of projects, but a lot of my projects I buy, work on, and turn around and sell. And there there was never a, a project to finish to start with. This is a project to finish. This is one I want to do for myself and do for my wife. And so it's a little different on this situation. But, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff, uh, uh, you know, the old trucks and cars and stuff I buy, you know, that stuff's always for sale. So, uh, but as for permanent projects, you know, this is definitely one of them. But, uh, but to show you the dedication and, and behind something, I, I want to put a link of a video in my description here. And... I watched this video about two years ago and I just happened to stumble along it again the other day and I was really surprised that there's no more views than what there really is on it and uh, it's about a, a lady I think she's about 98 years old now and her name is Maisie and you know they, they for years they called her crazy Maisie and then uh, they sort of changed and they started calling her amazing Maisie because of something that she done and it took her 30 years to do it and you want to talk about dedication i mean that's uh that's doing something and but anyway just you know if you if you like inspirational videos something that you know might get you rolling and get you thinking about doing something you know click on the link in the description and and watch that video and see what you think and uh we're gonna uh we're gonna keep collecting parts for this thing and i think i've got the entire interior except for the carpet uh I've got a lot of stuff for it, and I may go ahead and order some quarters, and and uh, and you know I may pay somebody to put them in. I may not even do it myself, but I think uh, stripping it down and going on and and getting it blasted is probably going to be the best thing to do. But anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.